Now, one beer, cold and wet. Well, it's wet most of the time. Cold, the odds are eight to five, the customer on the short end. I'll take the chance. <laughs> hey, you are. Yeah, thank you. I got lucky. <laughs> Give me some whiskey. Sure, cowboy. Watch who you're bumping. I didn't bump you, mister. What do you mean? You're bumping, you made me spill my drink. Look, I just told you, friend, I didn't bump you. I didn't even move. Are you calling me a liar? I really don't think it's worthwhile calling you anything. What's that supposed to mean? Anything you want it to mean. You got it. Yo! You ain't ever gonna call nobody else nothing. You really think it's worth getting a man killed for? Yeah. yeah you go ahead and beg me. I might listen. And then again, I might not. Much obliged. Ain't much good in a fella that interrupt a beautiful music selection. How about a drink? Well, I don't know why not. But trouble with some of them saddle tramps. A couple of drinks and they're out to gun down the world. You better watch out for that cowboy. He looked mean. I noticed that. But another one of those wet beers I spilled most of the last one. Come on right up. What do you want? Oh, wet beer sounds unusual. I think I'll try one. I like it too. Hey, by the way, my name is Joe Cartwright. Oh, Tracy Blank, pleased to meet you. All right, good. These are on the house. Well, thank you very much, sir. I'm just passing through here. Are you permanent in this part of the country? Oh, any place I enroll my blanket is my part of the country. Have you got any family? No, I ain't got none. That man's always got friends, huh? Oh, sure, I got friends all over the place. <laughs> I got them in five states and two territories. Yeah, what kind of work you do? Cow here mostly. I do anything. All right. Of course, I ain't never been president of the United States. <laughs> I guess that's a different kind of job. But I don't think there's much difference in being a cow hand at the Circle Y around here or a cow hand at the BJ down in Texas. Hey, you worked at the Circle Y. I just came from there. Cartwright, yeah, you, you may be one of the reasons I quit. Yeah, they were going to have me baby that new herd you were bringing in. Uh, they going to have me working so hard it would have interfered with my music. Well, I'm sorry. Had I known, I never would have delivered the herd. Oh, I was going to move on anyway. Doesn't matter. Well, it takes a big load off my mind. That's what he can deliver a herd of cattle, but I didn't think I interfered with a guy playing the solo guitar. I mean, that's really something. Well, it's nice to meet a true music lover. You said you're moving out. Where are you heading? Well, I've been north, so that leaves southeast and west. I just get on my horse and just go. Well, listen, I'm riding southeast. Why don't you come along? That might even be a job for you at the Ponderosa. Well, I don't know. I got a month's pay weighing me down. I don't know what I need a job for. Well, look, there's nothing wrong with another month's salary. Fill that other pocket. You won't have to ride out of balance. 
I don't know. Seems like such a waste carrying all that money around. And you can travel light, just drift, be free. Well, suit yourself. Thanks again. Yeah. Hey, look, hey, I, I don't know about the job, but I'll travel down there with you. Good enough. Let's go. Hey, you know, something's the matter with me. I was going to sit here, I was going to drink and get drunk and spend my money, have a good time, and a total stranger talks me out of it. You know what's the matter with me? Got no character. See you. Bye. How about a tune? I have a choice. <laughs> What'll it be, cowboy? My name is Fargo Taylor. I'm looking for a man. Well, if you don't see him here, he ain't here. I'll ask the questions, you'll answer. If I whistle, you'll dance. If I tell you to lay down and roll over. I... I lay down and, and roll over. Young. Got a smart mouth. About six feet tall. Has he got a name? A dozen. Brown, Baker, Apley. Uses the first name of Clint or Tracy most of the time. Plays a guitar. A fella... A fella like that was here. Where is he now? Well, he, um... He rode out about two, three hours ago. Where to? Well, where to? He said he was heading for the Ponderosa. Thank you. Tell you how grateful we are to you, Tracy, for what you did. Anything we can do for you, you just let us know. Well, it's a mighty handsome offer, but I can't think of anything I'm short of. Hey, you know, I did tell Tracy we'd have a job for him here. Well, of course, certainly. Well, thanks very much. As long as I don't have to say how long I'll stay, I might take off any minute. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Joe, did you get the uh, cattle delivered to the Circle Wine good shape? You bet I did. Got them delivered, checked out, and receipt given. Ah, good. Yeah, Thompson's gonna get that money he owes us from Wichita. He said he'd we'll send it here. We'll talk about that later, Joe. Uh, those horses need looking after. Hoss, would you take care of that and show Tracy to the bunkhouse? Yes, sir. That's it. Hey, but I want to tell you about the money. He said he'd send it here to us. Talk about it right? in the house. What was that all about? What do you know about Tracy? What do I have to know? Probably nothing. Which is exactly what you do know. He saved your life and you like him. Sure I like him. And I trust him, don't you? Let's say I like him. Certainly I like him for what he did for you. That doesn't mean that I mistrust him. Except you don't have to start telling him about all the money that's come to this place. Oh, come on, Pa. What you're saying is that he has to prove himself innocent before you decide he's not guilty. No, I'm not saying that at all. Well, what are you saying, then? I see a sheep, Doc. He wags his tail. That marks him as friendly. That doesn't mean I put my hand in his mouth until I'm absolutely certain he's not part wolf and won't bite it. All right, let's, let's forget it. I don't want to argue about it, Pa. Uh, Joe, I know exactly how you feel. He, uh, he saved your life and you're loyal to him. That's the way it should be. Now, what about the money? Uh, the bank messenger from Wichita will bring it right here to the house. Good. I'll go clean up. Joe? I think Tracy's gonna make a good addition to the Ponderosa. I'm glad you brought him. Oh, man. 
happy and contented as I can be. Cause I got Lori in love with me. Got no problem that I can see. Except Sally. Oh, Sally can sew and she can spark. A spark and we do lights up the dark. Should be happier than a lark. There's Marcy. Marcy can't cook and she can't plow. She really don't have to anyhow. What she does, they shouldn't allow. Not often. Meet lots of fillies as I ride by Might disremember to say goodbye And oh, they sob And my, I cry Sometime till sundown You know he sang that thing all the way in from town? Three calves came up, started nuzzling up against. Thought it was her mother. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to let him get shot, and I passed it up. Joe, you shouldn't say Tracy singing. Uh, it sounds like a cow bawling. I'd say it sounds more like a sick cow. <laughs> <laughs> Another music lover. Well, listen, I'm gonna get some sleep. You go right on when you're singing, but just not not too loud. I, I gotta sleep. I think I'm gonna join you, Joe. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Circle Y. Are you sure you're right? You just be ready on Thursday. There'll be $10,000 waiting for us to pick up. Right down there on Ponderosa. <laughs> well, well, as far as old man, the shotgun riders are back on the way to town. Good. You know, it's a funny thing. You turn a herd of cattle into money, you end up with something that takes up a lot less space, don't you? <laughs> you can't get it in the bank today. You figure on leaving it in that tin box. I'll have you understand, son, that I paid $50 for that tin box. Oh, Paul, I got news. They saw you coming. Well, get all those fences mended? Yeah, we... Worked our way down to Tony Creek. We'll finish the rest of the south end tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, you a pretty good worker? Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, we may hire him to mend all our fences. <laughs> you wait a minute. I'm not that good. <laughs> Howdy. Anything we can do for you? Nobody moves. Nobody gets hurt. What is this? What do you want? Stay out of this. It's him, I want. What? Drop your gun belt. I don't even know you. Drop your gun belt or I drop you. I don't care which. You the law? The gun in my hand is. You get bullheaded, you make my job easier. You all want it in Tucson, dead or alive. I see no bounty hunter, huh? I've had enough talk. Move out. Tracy? You want it in Tucson? No, sir. I say you are. You coming or not? Look, mister, I, I don't know who you are, but I know I'm not wanted anyway. There, what? Paul, what happened? Well, he had a road in here and shot him. Now get me out of the house. No. You manage all right? Yeah, sure. Okay, work this out. Tracy. Yeah. What would I have done without your 
tender care. What are we stopping for? It's not gonna be able to catch up to him before dark. A lighter dark, what's the difference? You can't follow tracks in the dark. Well, if you can't follow tracks in the dark, why don't we camp here and start in the morning, huh? Don't you want to get this guy? That's a stupid thing to say, isn't it? He shot my father. He's not going to get away. We'll go back to the ranch, get an early start in the morning. I want to see how my pa's getting along. Look, now, why don't you go back alone, huh? No. Why? You afraid I might take off? You think that bounty hunter might be telling the truth about me, huh? I think a lot of other people might see it that way. Look, I'm no outlaw. If I thought you were, would I ride out here alone with you? Sure as heck wouldn't turn my back on you. Wait. Let's see how your pa's getting along. Joe and Tracy. Alone. I'm glad they're back. You all right, Pa? How you feel? Oh, fine. Donnie Hunter got away, huh? Not for long, though. I'm gonna let him get away. I mean, nobody's gonna be allowed to get away with that. I shoot you? Huh? Call me a wanted man, hit me in the face? Huh? He's gonna pay for that. You'll see. We'll be on his trail in the morning. We'll stay on it. I'm going with you this time. No. Oh, Pa. I don't say no to you, Orson. Say not anybody to go after that man without the proper authority. Tracy. Tell us. Something I want to clear up my mind. Now, you say you're not a wanted man. No, sir, I swear I'm not. Well, see, that bounty hunter, he had a good long look at you. He, he recognized you, seemed to. He, he knew you. How do you account for that? Well, I, I don't know. I don't know how I come for it, sir. I only know I'm not wanted. I'm not wanted in Tucson. I'm not wanted anywhere. And I don't know what I can do to make you believe that. Hmm. Oh, so you uh, run to Virginia City. Tell Sheriff Coffey what happened out here. And have him send a telegraph to Tucson. You know, so we can clear everything up and put your mind at ease. Well, I hope you do that. And, Tracy, nobody is going after that bounty hunter unless he does it illegally with a properly authorized posse. Well, he's one deputy. They're not going to have to coax. Make that two. Three. Well, look who's here. Uh, who's expecting? Well, I wasn't expecting nobody, but I'm glad you come. What's on your mind? What brought you to town? Well, Roy, Paul got shot in the leg. You heard bad? No, nothing serious. He's going to be all right. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Tell me about it. Yeah, well, I will. That, uh, that coffee show does smell good. Yeah. Well, help yourself. You know where it is. Well, anyhow, it all started over in Smithville. This drunk was going to shoot little Joe, and then this fellow named Tracy decides he'll deal himself a hand. I cut it out. Well, what's the matter now? Well, you wouldn't bet $5,000 if we were playing with real money, would you? Well, how do I know? I never had $5,000 in my life. All right, well, let's just make believe we're playing with real money. If I bet a dollar, the best you do is you'd see me and you'd raise me a dollar, right? All right, $1,000. How's that? Is that better? Oh, that's great. You know, I've just been thinking. You know, I've heard it said that, that there's somebody who looks exactly like somebody else Somewhere in the world. Uh, an exact double, you know? What is that supposed to mean? 
Well, I was just thinking, I was trying to figure out why that bounty hunter was so positive that you were the man he wanted. Like you said, there must be somebody that looks exactly like me somewhere. Well, I'll tell you, my friend, if he bets exactly like you do, I can see why he's wanted by the law. So I have four queens. All right, it's your deal, money bags. Hey, and make it honest. I try. How about another cup of coffee? No, I think you're right. Two's plenty. Well, I'll get that telegraph off tonight to Tucson, and I'll go after that bounty hunter tomorrow. Good. Roy, how about putting me up for the night? Well, surest thing you know. That uh, cell one in there has got the best mattress of the bunch. Well, yeah, but there's a man in there. But that cell two ain't bad. The mattress is a little lumpy, but you'll squish him out. <laughs> kind of man that can stay in bed. You ought to know that. I think I know that better than anybody. Let me, let me put your leg up here. Easy. Yeah. Get your pillow, make it a little soft. Joseph, you're absolutely certain that you never saw that fellow who shot me before? Well, I, I already told you I've never seen him before in my life. Well, no, dang well, I never saw him before. Now, how about some nice hot coffee, huh? Why did he shoot me? Well, he shot you because he wanted to take Tracy and you wouldn't let him. I wasn't wearing a gun. And yet he shoots me. Shoots me in the leg. Why in the leg? Well, I don't know why in the leg. I'm glad he didn't shoot you in the heart. He probably just didn't want to kill you, that's all. And then he runs away. Without taking Tracy with him. Yeah, well, look, he saw Tracy and I go for the guns and he panicked. Well, he didn't impress me as being the kind of fellow who'd panic in any situation. Hey, pa, look, why, why don't you, uh, why don't you relax, read a good book? Hmm? Hey, must be Hoss. It's about time where you've been all night. Well, we had to wait for an answer about Telegraph 2, sir. That what it say. Looks like this man Tracy is not wanted. I'll tell him the news. Then... Roy, forgive me for not getting up. I'm glad to see you sitting up. Hey, Tracy, you up there? Yeah. What's up? A horse and the sheriff just rode in. They got that telegraph from Tucson. Says you're not wanted. Does that surprise you? Uh, didn't surprise me. Come on. Let's get that lion bounty, honey. Don't worry, the parcel's not gonna leave without us. And I was counting on horse here and a little Joe for my posse. Oh, you're going to have to do with just one of them. I want the other one to stay here with me. Ben, from horse's description, I know that bounty hunter, a man named Fargo Taylor. Oh, he's a mean one. And I'm just going to need every good possum that I can get. Well, I'm going to need someone here with me. Oh, Paul, I'd sure like to go with him. I prefer you to stay. Are you Tracy? Yes, sir. Did you ever hear of a man named Fargo Taylor? Well, not that I remember, no. Why? He fits a description of the bounty hunter. Well, I don't know him, but I'd sure like to have the pleasure of meeting him again. You got any idea why he picked you? Well, now, that's just one of the questions he's going to answer when I get to him. When I get finished with him, he'll answer anything you want to know. And just how are you going to get your hands on him? You got a posse, don't you? You're going to go after him, right? I am, but you're not. Hey, now listen, I got a right. Not in my posse. I pick men I know. And even when I know them, I don't take a hothead that's got an axe to grind. <laughs> now, this Fargo, he's wanted for arrest, not for vulture bait. Well, then I'll get him myself. Come on, now, Tracy, that's no good. Try and stop me. Look, simmer down. I know how you feel. I know you want to go. Well, we can get him without you, and that's all that counts. Not to me, it don't. Ben, I believe I got the answer. You keep this hot head and the horse goes with me. That's not a bad idea. 
You got me out of some trouble. This will keep you from getting into some. How about it? I guess I'll stay if you want me to, Mr. Cartwright. I sure owe you that for getting you shot. That arrangement suits you, Ben? <clears throat> yeah. Should be fine. All right, boys, let's go see if we can get us that bounty hunter. Oh, well, you take it easy. Yeah. You like to be going with him. What'd you say? Oh, I said I'd sure like to be going with Turn back, Roy. Them tracks are as clear as a logging road. Yeah, maybe too clear. Now, why would a smart operator like Fargo leave a trail anybody could follow? Well, you and Tracer are both after him. Maybe he's in too big a hurry to stop and clear it. Yeah, it could be. He's a manhunter. He knows about trailing, hiding his tracks. I don't think we're going to find the answer to that here. Let's go. If you are my brother, you'd get yourself killed sneaking up on me like that. I didn't sneak. You just stunned here, good. You got the nitro. I got enough in here to blow three safes. We may not need it. Who's left in the house? Old man Cartwright's in there with that hole in his leg and Tracy. The others? Well, the hands rode out early this morning. Oh, the sheriff came by and took everybody else out chasing you, just like you figured they would. Did you check the buildings to make sure nobody hung back? Yeah, there's nobody here. Ain't nobody gonna bother us unless that posse turns around. Check the buildings, I'll cover you. Uh, there's nobody... Make sure, like I made sure that posse has its hands full. Go on. Bothering you, Mr. Cartwright? Huh. <sighs> Anything I can get you? Nothing I can think of. you were afraid he was going to make it too easy for us to follow him, take a look around. It's going to take a lot of doing finding any tracks in this hard ground. I just don't understand why he took the long way around to get here. Well, if he's going to try to cross Devil's Furnace, he'd have to stop and get water, wouldn't he? Yeah, more than likely at Quayley. That still doesn't make sense. He could have gotten into Hard Rock Country five miles back, but he didn't. Well, maybe he just didn't want to go that way. Boys, we're gonna split up and spread out. Now, Hoss, you head for Quayley's. Little Joe for the dry riverbed. Timmy, you go up that wash as far as you can, and David ride due north. Now, I'll follow along the ridge here, and the first man that sees the sign, fire two shots. Is that clear? Right. Now, well, let's go. <laughs> Just something's not bothering you, Mr. Cartwright. Hmm? 
You sure? I was, uh, just trying to figure out what two and two add up to. Well, you should ask me. The answer's four. <laughs> I, I was trying to figure. Why would a, an experienced body hunter mistake you for a man wanted in Tucson? Well, like you said, he mistook me for somebody else. I know I said that. But that time I didn't have some pertinent information. Like nobody answering to your description is wanted in Tucson. Now, a man can be mistaken for somebody. Can't be mistaken for nobody. <laughs> Hey, what are you driving at, Mr. Cartwright? <laughs> you know, there is something you can do for me. Get me a cup of coffee. There's some hot in the kitchen. Oh, well, I don't think I should leave you here alone, you know, because if you move, your leg might start to bleed again. <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't intended to move. <laughs> Oh, there's one other thing I'd like you to do for me, if you would. <laughs> Clean this gun for me, please. Needs cleaning bad. Sure, Mr. Cartwright. One clean gun, one cup of coffee coming up. Yes, sir. One cup of coffee, one clean gun coming up for Mr. Cartwright. and get over in that chair and sit down. Go on, move! Sit down! <laughs> I'll just take care of this. You know about me. <laughs> well, I get drunk, and then I get mean. Oh, I get mean. I came about that close to killing your son. <laughs> There's lucky for him, old Tracy stopped me. Just as you planned. Well, see, that's just the first part of it. So if you just tell us the combination, everything will be okay. Disappointed in you, Tracy. I sure thought you knew me better than that. Well, you're a rich man. Would you let yourself get killed for that kind of money? Rich man or poor man, that's not the point. Principal and two bitch will buy you a glass of whiskey at the nearest saloon. Did you get the combination? Not yet. Stay stubborn and you get killed. And what's to prevent you from killing me if you get the combination? Nothing. But you got a chance, I won't. Maybe you got some idea help will come. No chance. You worked out too careful. That one bullet I put in your leg took care of all the Cartwrights and the Sheriff. You here where we need you? Them out chasing a trail that goes far and ends nowhere. When you leave here, there'll be another trail. And no matter what happens to me, it'll be followed, and you'll be at the end of it. Mr. Cartwright, Frog will kill you if you don't tell him. And I know him, and he'll kill you. If I have to kill you, it'll cost me no sleep. It'll be better for me if I let you live. That way, when they come after me, and they will come, there'll be less hate eating at their insides, driving them. When the trail gets hard, it'll be easier for them to turn back. Oh, go, Taylor.
Body hunter, killer, and philosopher. But if I live, I'll come after you. I'm giving you a choice. You hand me that money, or you'll never live to spend it. Think on that, Mr. Cartwright. Think on it. But think fast. <laughs> Not a thing. You? Not a thing. I finally ran across some soft ground, but no tracks. He didn't head for the Quailies. Nor this way. Hadn't heard any gunshots, so apparently the others hadn't run across his trail either. Right now, it don't look like we are. Well, we always take that chance. I've been outsmarted before, and no doubt it'll happen again. Why don't we go back to the place where the trail ended there? Maybe we missed a sign, or maybe he even backtracked a ways. <laughs> what about Joe and the rest of the posse? Well, if they find anything, we'll hear their shots. If they don't... They only got one way to go, and that's back. All right, let's go. Hey, Tracy, you got an itch that keeps you moving like that? Mr. Cartwright, far going. He's telling the truth when he says he ain't bluffing. Fargo, I'm gonna stay alive. Whether I give you the combination or not, if it's to your advantage, and if it isn't, you're gonna shoot me no matter what I tell you, so you get nothing from me. All right, blow the safe. Hey, instead of shooting him, why don't we just tie him up next to the safe? That way he'll have the same amount of time to change his mind about talking as it takes for that fuse to burn up. Get in the other room, out of the way. Where is it? You're gonna wish you were dead, Cartwright. And you'll get your wish slow. You'll talk or you'll scream. If I have to, I'll carve that money out of your hide a dollar at a time. Where is it? It's, uh... It's in my bedroom. I'll show you where it is. You stay. He'll get it. Just tell him where. My, uh, my bureau, the secret compartment there. Better, better show him where it is. If it's there, you'll find it. He's got a nose for money.
compartment in here. Fargo! You hear me, Fargo? Yeah, I hear you. Keep looking. Still playing games, huh, Cartwright? Where's that money? Mr. Cartwright, you tell him where the money is. It ain't worth dying for. If he had the money now, he'd be dead now. I've had enough talk. Wait a minute. Look, I'll make a deal with you. If he tells you where the money is, I'd give you my share of it, okay? Only promise me you won't kill him. I don't kill him, I get your share? That's right. You got yourself a deal, boy. Good. Yeah, Mr. Cartwright. You just tell him where the money is. Oh, please. I've done all I can. All right, Tracy. You get the money. It's in that... In that wooden box on the table. Go get it. Don't you, Cartwright? Wait a minute, Fargo. You promised. You gotta learn, boy. You never trust a thief. I had no family, no, no blood tie. Oh, I was really getting to like y'all. Coffee's office. Tell me that Fargo's gonna be all right. He'll live to stand trial. Good. If he won't try, I'll be very happy to testify. 
Yeah, that's too bad about Tracy. That boy had a lot of good in him. He just needed someone to help him find himself. It's a shame it happened too late. Yeah. Hey, you know, I was wondering, I never did ask you, where did you hide the money? Oh, um, I didn't. What do you mean you didn't? Well, Hop Singh was going into Carson City, so I, I had him take it along and put it in the bank. Well, look, I don't get it. If, if, if you knew the money wasn't here, why didn't you just tell Fargo that? Well, if I told him, he probably wouldn't have believed me, and if he did believe me, he probably would have killed me anyway. I felt the only chance I had was to make him believe that the money was somewhere in the house and stalled for time. Yeah, well, I must say, you stalled pretty good. We couldn't have come much closer. No, it couldn't have. And I want to thank you very much for not following Roy's orders to stay with the posse. Yeah, well, it's like you've always said, Pa. I'm, I'm not very good at following orders. Yes, I believe I've said that a number of times. <laughs> Have us some coffee, huh? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, Joe. Joe, I'd like you to do me a favor. Yes, sir. Forget what I ever said about following orders. I think I like you just the way you are. <laughs> I'll get the coffee.